Hello, everybody. Welcome to this quick Inventor NASTRAM validation example. Uh, today, we're taking a look at a thick-walled spherical vessel under uniform internal pressure. This comes from Rourke and Young, 5th edition, page 506, table 32, case 2A. Uh, what we have here is a 1 8 section of this sphere. So the dimensions on it are a 10-inch um, outer radius and a seven inch inner radius. Once I created the two circles of those dimensions, then I revolved it 90 degrees. So we're left with a 90 degree segment or one eighth of what would be the complete sphere. And what we're going to do is add a load to the inside of that. The load is going to be um, 10 KSI or 10,000 PSI and the material properties that we will define are 0 0.3 for Poisson's ratio and a Young's modulus of 30 E6 and then we're going to try and hit as close as we can to a max deflection and stress tensor uh, as shown here. So let's go ahead and work with this model. Uh, currently I have the model in the 3D model space of Inventor. I am using Inventor Professional 2022. So what we're going to do is go to the Environments tab. Off of the Environments tab, we are going to select Autodesk Inventor Nastran. And as we come into the Nastran space, the program realizes that we have a volume here. It's a solid. So it creates an idealization that is the solid element type. Maybe what I'll just do is just double click actually down one level from there. And there you can see it sets up a idealization with solid elements. This color will be the mesh. If you want to change that color, we can change that up. And the material right now, it just has a generic material. Let's go ahead and click on the icon for a new material. And what we can do then is just type in the values that we need. So the modulus was defined for us as 30E6. And I'm working out of English inch units here. Poisson's ratio is 0.3. And we'll say OK. So now if I say OK to that, we can see that the material is there for us. And if I double click it, make sure we have our values there. Certainly we can go to select material and we can access the library of materials. But uh, given those are the only two material properties we're really concerned with here, we can choose you know, to just enter in those values. Um, and that ended up taking out my values. Um, but just be aware that it does have a library, actually several different libraries, or you can just type in the materials. I guess I could just cancel out of this screen and that should, we'll confirm that, should maintain my values from before. Yes, it does. Okay, so there's the 36, there's the 0.3. So we have the material and the element type taken care of. Uh, we do need to add some constraints to the geometry. Since it's a 1 8 model, we are going to define our symmetries. So the symmetry, of course, we whatever the face, whatever plane that face lies in. So this face that we would have cut through for the symmetry here is the XY plane. Normal to that would be the Z direction. So that's the symmetry we're going to apply to that face. So I'll select that face, select Z symmetry, and you can see what it does to our constraints. So it constrains the out of plane translation and the two in plane rotations. And we can give that um, constraint a name just to kind of keep things nice and clean in our Nastran model tree. So define it as Z symmetry or assign the name as Z symmetry. So that way you can see that it adds its name over here. That way if I have to edit them later, I know which one I want to edit or need to edit. So let's repeat that process. This face over here perpendicular to that face is the X. So we can choose X symmetry. And again, I will assign it a name here. And say OK. And then finally, for constraints, the bottom of this model right here, we'll select that surface. And that would be our perpendicular to that face is our Y symmetry. So let's go ahead and select that. And we'll assign it a name. 
And then the next step that we need is the load. So we need a pressure on the inside surface here, and that's going to be uh, 10,000 PSI. So we'll just type that value in, say OK. And there's our pressure arrow. Uh, last thing that we need to do before we run this analysis is generate a mesh. So we can just go ahead and click the Generate Mesh button. And that looks like a reasonable mesh. <laughs> if you would like, you can go into the mesh settings and you can you know, specify your own mesh size or uh, move the slider, coarse or fine. I think what we have there should be just fine. Um, if our results are a little bit far off, certainly the mesh is one of the things that we can take a look at, try and reduce that mesh size and uh, see if that improves our accuracy. Let's go ahead and run it. We have in this model, uh, look like 12,000 elements, so not a very large model. Shouldn't take too long to, to execute. There we go. And so, first thing we're going to take a look at is the uh, displacement. And our displacement value maximum is 0 0.002793. So let's type that into our spreadsheet and see what we get, 0 0.002793. That looks pretty close. Yeah, so 0.1% uh, different. And then we're going to take a look at one of our stress tensors. Technically, we're looking at the hoop stress, uh, but the stress tensor uh, YY on the XZ plane uh, would be the equivalent. So if we go into the stress and then immediately adjacent to that, I can say that I want the solid Y normal. And there we can see a value of uh, 13,342. So let's go ahead and plug that into our spreadsheet. 13,342.7. And that shows us we're about... Um, 4% right there. So if we wanted to try and change that up a little bit, I would suggest maybe as a next step, uh, we could refine the mesh a little bit. Uh, but less than 5%, I'd say that's pretty good for a first pass. So hopefully that shows you a little bit about how to work with Autodesk Inventor Nastran. Gives us some validation, some confidence that the program is able to uh, arrive at this solution that your hand calculations would. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.